We were designed to hunger for the deep things of God, to thrive on faith and wonder, to seek out divine wisdom that defies human logic. We were designed to unlock the mysteries of God. This is Breathing Underwater. Hello, hello, this is Margot. You are listening to Breathing Underwater, episode six. We are here with another guest today. We're going to be doing a live interpretation. Yay, my favorite. I am really going to get into this, you guys. So today I have none other than my sister, Carrie Beyer. Carrie and I have known each other all our lives. (laughs) We grew up in the same house. We are four years apart and really different people and have a ton of similarities as well. If you've ever met us in person, you know, oh my gosh, obviously your sisters. Our mannerisms are similar and you'll even see in the tone of her voice that we have a similar tonation to our voices, but um, our minds are wired really differently, which at times has been interesting and other times just really fun and so complimentary. So... The fact that I am having my sister on here to interpret a dream of hers and jump into this deep spiritual place using symbolic language is just an absolute joy. I would say years ago, this would probably not be something she would be as open to doing, but man, she is growing and changing and running with God in such beautiful ways. So, uh... It's just a pleasure for me to have her today. So I could say so many more things, but I won't spoil it. Without further ado, here is Carrie's dream. Hi, Cares. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is my sister. She That's is me. the best. She's the best. I wish you could see her face because she's also beautiful. Yeah. And so much fun. And fun to have you, Cares. Thank you. This is, feels like a huge milestone, sort of mon- monumental. I'm on your podcast right now. I'm a I guest a podcast. On your podcast. You have real. a podcast. <laughs> I'm a guest on it. <laughs> yep. This and feels like a long one time coming. And I'm your number one fan. Duh. <laughs> uh, love it. I just love it. And Carrie is new-ish to doing the dream interpretation stuff, but mm-hmm. it's taking very, taking it, taking like a duck to water. She's... <laughs> Making it quickly is what I'm trying to say. Um, so we're going to do a live interpretation of one of her dreams today. But before we jump into that, I cares. Will you just tell us a little bit about what your history with dreams is, prophetic dreams, dream interpretation? Like, what does that meant to you? When did that start? What do you even? Where are you with it now? Mm, oh, yeah. Um, I haven't been an avid dreamer my whole life. I feel like I kind of go through seasons where I dream a lot and the dreams seem really vivid and really real and just, you know, sometimes even like you, you wake up and you're like, gosh, that was crazy. That dream, you know, like really profound or just so visceral. You're like, wow. It was like, that was so real. But then I think like in the last five or six years, since I've been a mom, you know, my sleeping, like I've always been a hard sleeper, as you know, um, and so I think I used to dream more than I actually have in the most more recent past because it, as being a mom, I think I sleep lighter. And so I don't feel like I go into as deep of a sleep and dream as much. So, you know, obviously you have always dreamed and even just more in the last maybe 10 years since we've been living in the same city and been really close that, and you've shared all of your dream stuff with me and how the Lord speaks to you in it. and. And so I think that that has kind of really been my introduction. Like, I guess it I didn't necessarily occur to me that like, oh, God might speak to me through my dreams. I think you have dreams that feel like, wow, that felt so something that it kind of feels symbolic, right? Um, but you don't know what it means. But it's not like that has happened to me all the time. It just has felt really inconsistent is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my dreaming has felt inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When would you say you started to pay a little bit more attention or 
started to record them more or has it been kind of the same? You just are recording it when it feels significant in the moment. I mean, I think aside from the last maybe three or four years since you've been delving into this world so much and sort of encouraging me to do it, when I'll be like, gosh, I had this dream or whatever, how you've encouraged me to just be like, write it down. Yeah. Aside from that, I, I can't tell you if I've ever written a dream down. I, you know, I don't. Yeah. Um, so really just in the last few years, I've just been trying to record what I can remember. But I think the thing that often happens to me is that like, I'll dream and, and as soon as I wake up, it's like, I know I just dreamt, but it's already like escaping me, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, so it's sometimes even hard for me to record it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think that's pretty common. And yeah. I would say too, like just continuing to value this. And in that moment, even when you're like, oh, it's probably leaving, even just mm -hmm. in your own mind, lay there and go, no, I'm going to remember this. But again, it's like, we can only do what we can do. So yeah, totally. But I think that you've said this before and something that's a good thing to remember because I tend to do this, like putting my own value judgment on it of like, yep. well, it was, I mean, it was insignificant. Like I barely remember it. So it can't be really anything because if I barely remember it or if the details are fuzzy or if it's just like one little like flash of a visual, like I'm, I'm real visual. I mean, dreams usually are, I guess, but like writing it off, it's like, if it's not a comprehensive dream, like, oh, well, it wasn't anything kind of thing. Yeah. So that's something that has been helpful that you've encouraged me in to just kind of write it down. And anyway, whatever it is that you remember, whatever detail. Exactly. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, scripture talks about night visions too. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it was Daniel in particular who would have these elaborate night visions that, okay, are those different than dreams or they're happening at night? I don't entirely know, but mm. visions that we have in our waking time too, when we're in prayer or God is speaking to us, or we just have a flash, like those are things we pay attention to, especially even if it looks like a snapshot, it can feel like, was that anything, but it is mm. something. And the mm -hmm. same interpretation exactly. process applies. It's just a little bit different, but we don't have time to jump into that now. So let's mm -hmm. move on. Would love for you to share the dream. If you have to okay. read it from your phone, feel free to do that. And then I'm going to bring you through the process of questions. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Um, I'm at my friend, Allie and Lance's house, a friend from high school and her husband <clears throat> and doing laundry in the backyard, just kind of like regular life stuff. And for some reason, I'm just waiting there because I'm on my way to my doctor appointment. Apparently it was close by. I was pregnant again and I was ready to deliver soon. And then for some reason, this guy who, a guy from high school who I have like pretty negative memories of and kind of represents like a little bit of a dark time in my life, mm. his brother who actually represents even like <laughs> darker things to me yeah. Yeah. was there and he was talking okay. a bunch of nonsense to me. Okay. Um, and then randomly, I run into another friend from high school and his girlfriend and their kid at the store. And he's like, calls me Rachel. And I'm like, oh, Rachel. I'm okay, what? Like, <laughs> you know who I am. And then all of a sudden, I realized that this other girl named Rachel from a totally different season of my life later, like 15 years down the road in San Francisco was there also. <laughs> and then, you know, the details are pretty fuzzy here. I don't know, like there wasn't like a strong, easy transition, but I'm just kind of like bopping from random scenes. And all of a sudden there's an older woman who's gifting me a ceramic Christmas tree, which sort of, when I think about it, reminds me of one that grandma had growing up. Yep. She brought it into a retail thrift store where she worked, I think because she knew she, like it was something that she was going to give me and she brought it into this thrift store where she worked because my mother-in-law also worked there mm -hmm. and it was basically like anthropology but it was a thrift store and they put the tree aside for me for later it was sort of secretive like they wanted to make sure that nobody else like saw it and found it and wanted to buy it it was for me and then my mother-in-law was cleaning and accidentally knocked it over and broke it okay and that's the end yep okay cool dream cares you had this a long time ago right yeah, it was a year, over a year ago. Over a year ago. And the date was, what was the, the date? It was um, February 28th, 22. Okay. Beautiful. And if you were to give this dream a title, 
what would I title it? Um, yeah. Gosh, it's, that's a tough one because it's like three different separate things, but I would just say ceramic Christmas tree. Great. If I was filing it away for later. Yep. Beautiful. And it was long enough ago, you probably don't remember the emotions you had in the dream. Can you recall that at all? I definitely don't remember super like strong feelings, but okay. when I'm looking back at it, I feel like the first part with the pregnancy and the, the brother person talking to me, that didn't feel positive. It felt yeah. kind of like foreboding. Mm. Like, what, who are you? Why are you here? And all of a sudden you're like talking crazy nonsense. Like, I don't know. Yep. Um, and then the other part about the tree and my mother-in-law feels positive. Yep. And the part in the middle feels random. <laughs> when, <laughs> when she like, gets Wait, to okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. I know it can seem really random too, but these, these are definitely connected. You had them okay. at the same time for a reason. Okay. Um, when she accidentally broke the ceramic Christmas tree, do you remember having any emotion about that? Yeah, I definitely remember being bummed. Okay. Like, oh man, it's like a special thing. Okay. And what area of your life do you think it pertains to? I mean, <laughs> my personal life. I don't know if that sounds <laughs> too obvious. Um, I don't know. Maybe family? I don't, I don't. Yeah. I mean, family life? I don't have... know. Like pregnancy, mother in law. Yeah. Okay. So the fact that you were at Allie and Lance's. So you were in the backyard just doing laundry, which you were saying like, you know, life stuff, kind of just waiting there for your doctor's appointment to come. Mm -hmm. Like kind of like it was, their house was on the way and I just stopped there because I had extra time and was kind of just like waiting for my appointment. I was like, oh, okay. Awesome. What would Allie and Lance or their house represent to you? Well, I know that, I know that she's super into like, she's kind of like homesteading. She's like, Hmm. <clears throat> but which is kind of interesting totally random but they moved to Idaho like I mean it's just it's not something that I would have like pegged like oh this is what this makes total like it's not out of left field but it just was sort of like oh like they moved to Idaho and now they've got like on their way to like a mini working farm they've got chickens and she's canning and she's kind of like <laughs> wow. going for the, like the homestead lifestyle kind of thing and I think it kind of felt like that like I feel like we were sitting in the backyard and like there was laundry on a line you know wow um that's powerful yeah I love that you used the word homesteading that feels very significant yeah and which you know funny because it was so long ago and we don't talk a ton but I do remember like around this time like we had I think recently talked and I had kind of gotten an update on her life and what they were doing and she was talking about all that interesting Oh, I love it. Okay. This is definitely something, especially in the context of the past and family and this heirloom from grandma potentially. So we'll yes. just stop there. I won't get ahead of myself, even though I want to, I'm not going to. Uh, okay. So doing laundry in the backyard, this to me just feels like um, more speaking to like the whole lifestyle of homesteading and mm -hmm. being a stay at home mom and doing mm -hmm. life stuff, stuff that feels a little bit more mundane, but it's really building family. And mm -hmm. waiting there for a doctor's appointment because you were pregnant again and you were ready to deliver soon. Mm -hmm. So pregnancies can be literal, of course, but mm -hmm. in this instant, it sounds like it could just be representing you birthing something new in your life, carrying mm -hmm. a new idea, a new, um, something spiritually new that you were birthing, a new part of yourself. Would you say that there's something you can think of in the last year where you've really stepped up into something new or birthed something new with God? Well, <laughs> I think that just in the last year, a couple of years, but more so really in the last year, I have just been super hungry for mm -hmm. more of the Lord, just super hungry for more of the spirit and just wanting to know more about gifts of the spirit and just hmm. um yeah just just hungry for more of the lord and um ironically the day before i didn't realize now i maybe should have said it in the beginning but the day before that now that i'm looking at the dates i had had a really really profound dream about somebody else 
that ended up being like a really big, significant word from the Lord for them. I ended up telling them about my dream and it was like really impactful for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And for me, it felt like such confirmation of like, I hear from God, like he is speaking to me, like, you know, he speaks to me in my dreams. This, there was definitely some fear of going forward into telling this person what my dream was because there was definitely some risk like they could have thought I was nuts they could have been like whatever or they could have just been like okay thanks um but they they were like this resonates on so many levels and this is totally from God like thank you for sharing this and I think it just really solidified my confidence in hearing from the Lord and I feel like that is something that has been this last year has been kind of little yep okay so in this context, this could have been like this, this gift and this, um, I guess, promise even of coming into a new level of gifting with hearing God's voice or the prophetic or just operating in the spirit. Like that was really being, that was germinating in you. That was mm-hmm. something that you were holding and covering and nurturing and was about to to burst forth essentially. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So wow. let, me, let me, um, one sec, just looking back here, I took some notes. So in the, does it feel like in the context of this, this, this male and this brother of this male who represented something kind of dark, yeah. wow. um, they came in talking a bunch of nonsense. How does, how does mm-hmm. that feel like that fits in with what you just said? Yeah, that feels like, wow. It's just so interesting how I didn't to me, I'm like, this just seems, seems random and piecemeal and none of it makes sense or goes together, you know, but wow, that's really interesting to think because like, I, I actually really associate that person and that time in my life with being associated with them pretty dark and like some demonic, like yep. just yep. accusations like that. Totally. Like, mm. like. I'm just rereading what I wrote, right? Like pregnant again, ready to deliver soon. And then for some reason, this person's brother was there talking a bunch of nonsense to me. Mm-hmm. Like the naysaying of like what I was just saying before about how I felt like giving this person this word, this dream that I had about them was like pretty, it took a lot of faith on my part to be like, no, this is what I know. Like the Lord said this, this is what I know. And I'm doing this anyway. It, you know, there was a lot of accusation Ooh. inside pushing back on that. Yep. Feels pretty clear. I think that that's what that is speaking to right there. Mm-hmm. Totally. Wow. But, you know, isn't it beautiful? If we, this is what our, our logical minds are like, this is random. And what does this have to do mm-hmm. with anything? And the yeah. welcome into the mystery. Like I love to shroud things in mystery so that you'll come like a child. Mm-hmm. So that you'll come without your pride, <laughs> so that you'll come, I'm hungry. God, show me what you're saying. And and we get to just rely on him. It's such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing when we can get past our own, the offense of our own mind, thinking these things are yes. so foolish. Yes. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. That's what he Well, does. in that verse too, um, I don't remember exactly where it is. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to to seek it out, search it out, seek it out. It's Proverbs. Proverbs. Yep. Exactly. He's teaching us to be kings. Yeah. Okay. So this next part, then when you were at the store and this other friend and his wife and his baby were there and they were like, Hey, Rachel. And you were like, what? Um, yeah. <laughs> what would he and his wife or, or family represent? to you oh, gosh old season okay yeah old old man old self mm. Mm. how did it feel to be called Rachel I just think I remember being like what like a little offended because it was like it's not like a person who might not recognize me it's like I what I know you like mm. you don't remember me kind of thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um carry you know and I don't exactly remember how that happened but then that person was there the the girl who's actually named Rachel was there and I was like oh okay like it maybe made me go oh, okay 
that makes sense. Maybe he was talking to her or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. And tell us how you know Rachel, the actual Rachel who showed up. You said she was <clears throat> she was she was from like <clears throat> restaurant I worked at in San Francisco. Yeah, she was she, she was, was at Salt House. That's Salt House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like it's funny because it's like the friend is from high school, but his girlfriend and kid are his now family that I ran into. Like it was like I ran into them now, you know, obviously. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I was in high school. I ran into them now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And then this other person, same thing. Like I don't really talk to her. I don't see her like in another totally different random season of my life, but mm -hmm. not connected. Mm -hmm. Is there anything? My sense is it's really just about her name mm -hmm. and the name of the restaurant. But is there anything significant to you about who she was to you or anything that stands out about her personality or no? Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. So let me just give you my sense here. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm lost on that one. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. We're doing this really methodically right now. So interestingly, we're, we're talking about this season of your life where you're actually like really a stay at home mom. You're in this kind of waiting mm -hmm. space to some degree where you're building mm -hmm. your home. And the mundane things of life, like doing laundry and things are like, that's the reality of your, of, of what you're sewing into right now. But in the midst of this, you're pregnant with this new gift and this new connection to the Lord and the spirit. And there's the naysayers, you know, saying like, oh, you can't trust this, but you're, you're actually stewarding this baby and it's going to come to birth. And in the midst of this, you have this guy from high school who you said just now could represent old season, old you. Mm -hmm. coming and calling you by a different name and he's calling you Rachel and you're like uh, hello that's not me but then it actually ends up being Rachel from the salt house when you were talking about that every time you said the word season old season new season and then the salt house that word season really stuck out to me and a, and salt is a seasoning and when I think mm -hmm. of salt mm. I think of the salt of the earth I think of purity. I think of truth speaking. I think of being a light. I think of, you know, Jesus says, stay salty because we're a part of actually walking in truth and, ex and exposing truth in the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just think when I think of you, I think of that, I think of, oh, that's mm -hmm. a, that's actually a part of who you are innately. And that's a part of, I believe this even new self, like this guy from the old season is not recognizing you as the old you <laughs> he's recognizing mm -hmm. you as a new you. And this has to do with this you that's now called to the season to be using this new gifting of operating in the spirit and hearing God's voice to actually be salt and light to the earth. As you <laughs> call it. And the other thing that stuck out to me right away was the name Rachel, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. It's such a sweet name. It actually, I just looked it up. It, it means um, the spiritual connotation is innocence. And the scripture that goes with it is Hosea 14, 9. It says, those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them for the ways of the Lord are right and the upright walk in them. And that to me just feels like exactly what we were just talking about of, oh, here's this wisdom and discernment and understanding of the spirit that God is actually releasing to you and the ways of the Lord are upright and the upright walk in them. That's the idea of this saltiness, right? Of being salt of the earth. Not to mention, I thought of Rachel immediately from the Bible who, I don't know how much you know about her story, but she was the promised wife to um, Jacob, but he ended up getting deceived and married Leah first, but he was there because he loved Rachel and from Rachel's womb came basically his favored child, which was Joseph, mm -hmm. who ended up being this crazy, awesome dream interpreter guy who went through a ton of hardship, but ended up basically saving his family and saving the land in, in Egypt. It's such a beautiful story. I don't know how acquainted you are with it, but this child came from her womb. And so it, to me, when I thought of Rachel also just spoke to her call to birth something really sacred that mm. was actually going to affect the trajectory of the world, trajectory of the, of mankind feels to me like, oh no, this is the new you. Mm. 
this is actually who you're walking in is someone who's carrying something so significant meant to be salt and life in the earth trusting what she's hearing the voice of god because because what is being birthed is going to affect the generations forever wow <laughs> what does that feel like when i say that i mean feels really powerful mm. and profound and mm. i mean definitely resonates with a lot of what's just recently been happening in my life mm. but just just spiritually what I'm going through yeah. that is transformation transformation yeah well and I think really cool I think even looking back on this I wonder if the pregnancy is actually you birthing a part of yourself birthing this true self that is actually meant to walk in this kind of wisdom and understanding and connection with the spirit. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's the gift, but it's you because they're intertwined. It's actually, this is actually who you really are because this guy from high school sees you and calls you a different name. And you're like, dude, don't you know who I am? But that's not who you are anymore. Mm. And even wow. people outside of you are recognizing that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's jump to this last little bit that I know seems unrelated, but it's, I don't think it is. Okay. So there's this older woman who has, is, is going to gift you the ceramic Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned before, and I know because we're family, that that totally reminds us of grandma's ceramic Christmas tree that we had growing yeah. up. It was that beautiful green ceramic with the, with the light bulb colored lights that you actually put into yep. it and you can take out, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to tell so me special. Like, what that represents to you, what that means to you, that Christmas tree. Oh my gosh, tree. that little Christmas tree. Oh, I just start bawling just thinking about what it means to me. Okay. That's okay. I mean, I don't know. I guess just, just heritage, family, tradition, um, cherished memories and time, you know? The older woman, do you have any memory of who she is or how she felt? It's okay if not. The one who actually- I don't. The Christmas tree. I don't. Okay. But I mean, and it definitely, you know, an older woman, like, I don't know why it wasn't grandma. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, maybe it could represent her. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I would say in this older woman, especially in the context of the rest of the dream, and with mm -hmm. the tree, she could represent actually just like the female legacy mm -hmm. of our line. Mm -hmm. She she was gifting me a ceramic, ceramic Christmas tree, brought it into the store where she worked, where my mother-in-law also worked. And they put the tree aside for me for later because it was sort of secretive. Mm -hmm. Like this is for her. We don't want anybody else to find it and buy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then your uh, mother-in-law, Mm -hmm. was cleaning it and accidentally broke it well no she wasn't yeah but I mean it wasn't I don't think she was cleaning it not that it totally matters but she worked at the store too they, she was cleaning and I think she just bumped it over but I, I I remember being obviously really like oh my gosh no but also she was super like I'm so sorry oh my gosh like she was really like upset that she broke it <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, she definitely was like in cahoots with the lady to like hide it because it was for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. So I have a pretty strong sense about this. So I'm just going to go okay. into it. Yeah. And we'll see how it resonates with you. But um, so your mother-in-law's name, is it okay if I say her name? Because it's about what her name means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your mother-in-law's yeah. name is Denise. Mm -hmm. And I looked up the meaning of the name Denise just now while we were talking and Denise means favored reborn and it, the reference the scriptural reference for that name is Isaiah 65 17 for behold I create new heavens and a new earth the former shall not be remembered or come to mind Denise is the one that accidentally broke it and her name means reborn and we were just talking about you birthing this new part of you and you having this mm -hmm. transformation and coming into this new thing and my sense is just that everything from the family line that is intended for us to have for you to have will absolutely be yours but it's going to look different because God's doing a new thing 
and there's actually a uh, yeah, there's actually a refreshing and a, and a rebirth on the gifts of our inheritance where the things that are really true and deep are going to continue on, but he's doing a new thing in, in us mm-hmm. too and in you and what that looks like to be a matriarch, what that looks like to be a mother, what that looks like to homestead, which is so mm-hmm. interesting because of course her grandma's parents were homesteading from Norway and that's a huge mm-hmm. part of our story. So mm-hmm. to me, this whole thing speaks of the part of the inheritance and the calling that's generational that you've picked up that is true mm-hmm. to you and that is beautiful and that really is a part of the heritage. But there's also this rebirth and this new thing that he's doing in you and through you that will be for the legacy and the generations to come. Like Rachel, <laughs> you guys can't see her face, but she's looking at me like, okay. <laughs> tell me, tell me what that face means. Well, <laughs> Um, it means there it is, um, the little bow on it all resonates so much and is so connected and beautiful. And I'm just like, here I am, like, this is just kind of a random dream disconnected. Doesn't feel like makes sense. Yep. Yep. Which honestly, like the way that that all resonates is and makes sense and is intertwined is really profound. Mm. And listen, I I got to this interpretation because I do this a lot Mm -hmm. and because I'm used to really looking with symbolic lenses Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I'm asking the Holy Spirit the whole time we're talking, I'm asking the Holy Spirit and I just follow my curiosity where I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, that's interesting. You said season twice and now I'm looking at salt house where somebody else might be like, whatever, that's a weird coincidence. But I know in my spirit, like, no, that was highlighted. There's something Mm -hmm. of the importance of the salt and the seasoning. And then I just, in context of the dream and who you are, I'm like, well, duh. Like, I really feel like Mm -hmm. the whole being salt and light thing is absolutely a part of who you are. And even salt house, looking at it again, like house and home and houses Mm -hmm. representing our, our, our family name, you know, and this is actually what, what we're called to that these things just jumped out at me and I just followed my curiosity and then the pieces started to really connect. At what point did it start to kind of shift for you where we're like, oh, oh yeah, we're going there. Like this piece we just interpreted and it started to kind of unlock everything else. Yeah, I mean, I think that, and I think that this is probably like a pretty, <clears throat> accurate description of how we are different <laughs> but I was looking <laughs> I was looking at it just literally like literally right from the beginning you were like okay well what does Allie and Lance's house represent to you and I was like oh I wasn't thinking about it like what her house might represent to me I've actually never been to her house you know like I don't I don't know but what I know about her house is that it she's doing a homestead thing And so like, as soon as you prompted me to think about it in terms of metaphor or what it could represent, symbolic rather. Yeah. um, Okay. It just had to like shift the lens that I was looking at it in. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know we've talked before about just like pregnancy and carrying something, birthing, you know, that whole thing. Um. But yeah, I mean, so it was like pretty much right out of the gate, but you just helped me shift my lens. Yeah, shift the lens. And it just takes practice. And this is a part of the reason why it's so imperative that we're not immediately judging our dreams as silly because we wake up and it is, you know, we're just fleshly mindset, toss that, you know? But when we actually sit with it, this is what I'm saying all the time. Like we're giving it value or we're actually going, okay, I will actually let the foolish things confound the wise parts of me. And I will humble myself and come in just to say like, it's your delight, God, to reveal these things to little children. You know, like it says in scripture, like it's his delight to reveal things to those that are hungry and yeah, just ready to hear from him. And I would say I'm seeing you step into that more and more, but especially with dreams, this is just something we practice and practice and practice. And Mm -hmm. I would love to just, I guess, before we close, ask you what, if you were to name and title this dream now, would you still call it ceramic Christmas tree or would you name it something else? 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, you can sit with that and think about it. It was just a curiosity. There's no need. Yeah. There's no need to. Sometimes when we get <clears throat> name a title right away, sometimes it'll yeah. point immediately to like the the most important piece of the dream without even knowing. Oh, yeah. it. Sometimes uh-huh. it'll really end up being a part of the interpretation yeah. because we're just subconsciously drawn to a certain part. Um, mm-hmm. And then other times we're like, I don't know, I'm just naming it like. Oh, interesting. I just had. I just just thought old becomes yeah. new. It just popped into my head. Ooh. The old becomes new. And that actually just resonated even more because I don't know if I really emphasized this, but the last piece, an older woman, and she brings it into a retail store where she works. It's like anthropology, but a thrift store. It's old things. Old things, but in like very old things, but it was a new gift for me. But yeah, it was like a modern store. It looked like anthropology, but I knew it was all used. So it was old things. This is how it felt. Yeah. And then, but it, but it's a new, it's new to me. So you want to call it the old becomes new dream? hmm That's it. <laughs> That's so, so beautiful. Cool. So, I mean, there are so many reasons God speaks to us and mostly just because he loves us and he loves us to know how he feels about us. Totally. And- Mm-hmm. who we are and where we're at or answering questions about what should I do? And I would say this dream is really just an affirmation of the transformation mm-hmm. you're undergoing yes. mm-hmm. and that you're on the right track. Um, I like to ask, do you feel like there's application for the dream? Sometimes it's like, okay, now that I know this, this there's something for me to do, or it's just partnering with God and saying, yeah, I'm just going to receive this, or I need to pray into something or, you know, I need to go talk to this person. That's the next step in this. It, it's different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like there's a practical application for you at the moment? No, I mean, I think I'm in a, I'm on the same page as you are. Like, it just feels really like even more affirmation of everything that I've been experiencing spiritually yeah. this last year, but like this last week, I mean, wow. <laughs> the timing of god is so insane the timing of god and the fact that i i asked carrie to be on the podcast and just said you know bring bring any dream and she's like i don't actually think i have any i hope it's okay i'm telling this part (laughs) and i was like just look back through your journal she's like no i don't have any but we were going to meet and talk anyway and just see and then all of a sudden she's like actually i found a dream it was super fuzzy and i don't really know and it was from a year ago and it's this dream and i just feel like this is such a beautiful and I saw it before I just was like it's nothing ah you saw it. okay because you said you didn't have any but that meant to you like oh this isn't anything to look at yes mm-hmm. yeah 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 and then her second question was like oh there's all these people in this who's like names and people that I know and like I don't know if I could mm-hmm. bring that dream with all these people that you know do I name them and I just mm-hmm. assured her like it's very very likely that all those people actually just represent something so their names didn't mm-hmm. really even matter except for the ones mm-hmm. that I felt really did matter and were yeah. interpretation. Um, yeah. And we could maybe even dig into the other names of the people we didn't name on your own to see if that plays any significant role. But I think we've got the overarching interpretation. Mm-hmm. But this yeah, is just, totally, I, I'm just using this as an example because this is how this is how it works with dreams. And this is how it works with just following the Holy Spirit it's he knows the timing. And sometimes if you would have interpreted this dream a year ago, I guarantee you, we would not have had the same interpretation. Yeah, it's it's true because I didn't go through this process that I've gone through in this past year and week. Right. (laughs) Right. Wow. Kind of crazy. Right. Crazy. And so that's even permission. If you are dreaming and you have dreams that you're like, I have no interpretation for this. And you just put it on the Mm -hmm. shelf. It's okay to put it on the shelf because yeah, it will be highlighted when it's time to take it off the shelf. Mm-hmm. And I said this to Carrie, I said, you had this a year ago, but I bet you anything it's for now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Honestly, Carrie, thank you so much for A, sharing the dream because it, it can seem really low stakes when it's a dream that's like, ah, oh, this doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and then right. when it's like, oh, this is actually pretty personal and deep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Totally. It was just an honor to be with you. So thanks. Aww, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, 
Absolutely. And I'll have you again. Sure, I'll be back. I'm sure you'll be back. And there you have it. The ceramic Christmas tree turns old into new dream. I just love it. Goodness, I mean, I don't think I could have been any more excited about (laughs) how surprised she was about that dream. I know I mentioned it before, but I just want to draw attention to this because I think it's a great example of just reminding you of what I'm telling you all the time. Don't judge the dream in the moment. It is really hard not to do it, but we have to train ourselves not to. I mean, she was telling me all week she didn't have a dream. She didn't have a dream. She didn't have a dream. I'm telling her to look in her journal. Then all of a sudden, she has a dream. And she had it and seen it and looked at it this whole time, but she thought it was nothing. She was so convinced that there was nothing in that because it referenced people from her past in high school. And I mean, I get it. It, You can so easily think, oh, I'm probably just processing things from my past. I probably don't need to pay attention to that. But like I mentioned in episode four, when we were talking about the sources, Even if your soul is processing information in these dreams, you're going to find out about yourself if you actually sit with a dream, even if you want to label it as a processing dream. If you actually sit with it and let God unfold the symbolism he was speaking through, through your soul, if you will, the language that your soul is using, he's going to show you how to even learn the language of your soul. It's just... There's so much to mine. There's so much treasure in this space. And in this dream, she thought she could just toss it away. And this was just really profound. Really profound. Just putting an exclamation point on this season that she's in and this affirmation of what she's walking in and where she's going. So I just loved this. And I loved that she came really honest and authentic of, you know, it's hard for her to even remember dreams. She's a mom. She's not dreaming dreaming as deeply, sleeping, excuse me, as deeply. So isn't probably dreaming as much. And I just want to say, of course, if everybody's in a different life season, everybody has different dream cycles. Everybody dreams differently. And it's really just becoming acquainted with the way that you dream and the type of dreams that you have. And that just starts with stewardship. That starts with really valuing it and writing it down and just finding any little nugget that you can find to write down. I actually had a conversation with my cousin today, Steph. I'm giving you a little shout out here. She had a really great, great question for me that I wanted to just add to this episode before we close. She's asking, how do I record dreams when she's got a baby, like a newish born baby, a five month old baby in her room with her and her husband. She can't exactly pull a phone out and do a voice recording in the middle of the night. Turning on the light to write isn't going to work. Like what else can she do? This is so good. This is such a realistic question. Now I have kind of trained myself. I go to the bathroom once in the middle of the night. Sorry if that's TMI. Sorry, not sorry. And so I'm in the bathroom. And so now I know when I get up to go to the bathroom, I just bring my phone with me and I use that moment to record on my phone. Now, if you can do that and train yourself, okay, I just had a dream, get up and go into the other room and record it really quick. I like voice memos personally, just because you don't really have to think. You can keep your eyes pretty much closed. You don't have to write. It doesn't have to be bright. Um, But if you want to just write something down, step away, go to the bathroom, take two seconds, no, probably longer than that, 30 seconds to write down what you can remember, you will really be able to at, at least jog your memory in the morning. Or if you can linger in bed when you wake up, just stay there for an extra minute or two and just ask Holy Spirit or ask your heart, Oh, I dreamt last night. Remind me what I dreamt. Don't just jump out of bed and move past it. Lay there for a second and just ask Holy Spirit to remind you if you had any dreams. And in that moment, just write down what you can remember. Oftentimes it'll come back right away. Sometimes it'll come back throughout the day. But even just getting in the habit of having that linger moment, that could really help as well. So there's that. I'm so happy to have been with you today. I'm glad you got to meet my sister. And please um, email me with questions and let me know what you're learning from the podcast. Let me know what you thought of Carrie's dream, anything that stood out to you. 